So the energy of this week was coded within two sections, two portions in the Torah, in the Bible, called Achrei Mot Kedushim. The first one, called Achrei Mot, literally means after death, talks about the passing of two of the sons of Aaron, the high priest. This portion, Achrei Mot, there are two times during the year we read this uh, section, we make the connection with the energy within this portion. One time is obviously this week, always falls in the month of Taurus, as many of us heard last night um, in our new moon event of Taurus, that the energy of Taurus, Kabbalistically, is connected with the energy of healing. This month is connected with the energy of healing. So this is one time that we connect with the energy of the portion of Achremot. The second time we make the connection with this energy is in Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, the 10th day of the month of Libra. This is one day of the year considered to be one of the most elevated days. One of the purest days of the year. A day that we can make the connection with one of the highest forms of energy. In this day, the day known as the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, is a day that Kabbalistically we know the energy is so powerful that is capable to help any individual to literally wash away any negativity we created in our past. In our past as far as this lifetime, in our past as far as other lifetimes. Energy of cleansing. So, the first one, which is connected with awakening the energy of cleansing, energy of healing, energy of purity. The second portion, Kedoshim. Kedoshim in Hebrew means being holy. Means being holy. Now, Kabbalistically, when we speak about this idea of being holy, we never speak about the idea of being a righteous human being. When we speak about the idea of holiness, it is about being unified within yourself and the idea of being unified with others around you. Holiness, it means that we become more aware that the world that logically would seem to be so fragmented, so divided, so separated. Holiness, it is a state when the individual developing themselves into realizing, even feeling, how everything within this world is connected with each other. How we all in this world are connected with each other. How all the kingdoms in this world are connected with each other. Not only in the human level, but even with the physicality of this world, even with the inanimate of this world, even if with the, the vegetation kingdom of this world, with the animal kingdom of this world, how everything is unified, how everything is connected, how the world is a complete whole, and that we are all connected with each other. When the Kabbalists speak about this idea, how everything is connected, obviously we cannot see and reach this state of consciousness through our physical interaction with the world. Simply because physically everything is so separated and fragmented. So there will be a work that we need to do in order to access, to penetrate through the illusion of this physicality, to be able to see, to be able to feel, to be able to experience that unifying force that exists, that is being so concealed within this physical illusionary reality. And what is this unifying force? Is the divine spark of God that exists within all of us and everything in this universe. In this week, the universe is providing all of us with extra 
boost extra infusion of of energy of power of ability to remove space inside of us in our, inside of con- our consciousness to remove space in our life when we are capable to remove space from within it can help all of us to connect with the Our true self in much stronger and deeper level and second when we grow our connection with our true self in a deeper level it will help to remove blockages from our personal relationships with others removing the space that exists within our consciousness the space that exists within each one of us that makes us feel fragmented and And achieving a new level of unity within ourselves and within others this is what we want to work on in this coming week in order to start to do this work because this work is in a spiritual level is in a whole different level than any other week instead of starting to get into deep level of understandings as I do every week for many different ancient uh, writings I would like all of us to go through an experience and To be able to experience something instead of studying or learning about it I want you to find a fun com- comfortable position to sit I recommend not to just for this um, experience I recommend not to cross the legs or the hands our body as we mentioned helps us to channel and to experience the energy as well so we want to open up the channel find a comfortable way of sitting we'll dim the light a little bit and and close your eyes take a deep breath of the most powerful tools that we use in Kabbalah is the Zohar. Each word in the ancient text within the Zohar, the book, which is the source of the entire wisdom of Kabbalah, has the capability to help each one of us to awaken ourselves in a new level, to awaken our soul in a new level, to strengthen our connection with our inner light, with our true self. So I'm going to read one verse in the ancient language Aramaic, help us to awaken this vibe this frequency to awaken to open up those channels within ourselves and as I read it I want you to to think about if the energy of this week can help you removing space within yourself and removing space between you and others between you and the world where is it in your life that you need this energy ולא ישתכח, מן דסגיר הוא פתח, ווי לה הוא דרה. ומכאן ולאלה, לה יהיה דרה כדרה דה. הדרה דייתי מלכה משיחה, ומן דאה יתאר בעלמה. בכתיב, כי כולם ידעו אותי. למקוטנם ועד גודלם.
space can enter between our thoughts and our words. The moments in life when you are clear about what you desire to communicate. But when there is space between the mind and the mouth, the mouth doesn't find the ability to communicate in a clear way your intentions. We want to awaken the energy to give us a new ability to remove the space between our thoughts and our, and our words. Space can enter between your desires and your actions. You want something very much, but you don't find a way to manifest your desires through your actions. I want to awaken that energy, this infusion of light of this week. That can help you remove that space that can manifest between your desires and your actions. Space can enter between our mind and our heart. The mind might tell you one thing, your heart I tell you something different. I want to awaken this infusion of light, of energy, to help us to remove the space between our mind, our head, and our heart. Space can enter between your past, your present, and your future. When life feels and seems to be fragmented, I want to invite to bring in this infusion of energy that can help each one of us to realize how everything is one, everything is unified, everything exists in the now of your life. The now of your life can be something that is not being affected by your past, the now of your, of your life can be the moment when you awaken a new ability, a new strength, a new connection with your true self, with the light of the Creator within you, the divine spark inside of you, giving you the strength to plant a powerful, positive an amazing seed for the tomorrow. They are all connected. Space can be created between us and others. Space never brings us closer to who we are. The energy of this week, we want to awaken this infusion of energy. Remove the space between us 
and others as well. When there is space between us and others, within this space, this is where our negativity grows. This is where blame, this is where anger, this is where hatred manifest. And therefore removing the space, closing the space, eliminates any negativity, any form of negativity that was awakened and accumulated within this space. Your soul is divided into three parts, like your body is divided into many different organs, but they are all connected, they are all aligned with each other, they are all communicating with each other, they all care for each other. Your soul is also its parts seem to be fragmented but those parts are unified one part is the lowest aspect the lower spirit within us called the nefesh this is what brings the energy into our actions in life Our positive actions brings healing to this spiritual level within us. The higher level called the Uach, which is spirit. It's a higher form of energy within you. This form of energy is the part that provides all the light, all the energy you need for your words. we choose to use our words in a positive ways infuse the energy of our mouth with our spirit and removing space the third phase called neshama which is soul our soul is the part that infusing the energy into our mind, into our thoughts. As we strive to maintain and to grow positive thoughts in our mind, positive thoughts in your mind about yourself, about your life, positive thoughts in your mind about others, You allow the energy of your soul to bring in all what your soul is capable of. Through the spiritual work we do, we allow those three aspects to find unity, to become aligned with each other. Deep breath in. You can move the tip of your fingers, start to feel back your body. Slowly you can open your eyes. I want you to think 
throughout the experience and the meditation we went through, where did you feel there is the greatest need inside of you to use the energy of this week? Where do you want to remove space and to create unity in a deeper way? It can be within yourself, as we said, between your, between your thoughts, your words, between your desires and your actions, maybe between your head and your heart, maybe between your past, your present and your future, maybe between you and other people, where in your journey do you feel you desire to remove space and to create a deeper level of unity? I want to give you a few minutes, if you feel comfortable, to share it with a friend sitting next to you. You can do it in groups of three, please. <laughs> when my teacher, the Rav, Rav Berg, would speak about the, the secrets regarding removing space and creating a deeper level of, of unity within ourselves and, and among ourselves and other people and the, the entire world, that I would frame it um, in simple terms. We can live with fragmented consciousness or we can develop quantum consciousness. Quantum consciousness is consciousness that is capable to see how everything is linked, is connected, is affecting and being affected by everything in this world. Thoughts, words, actions, everything moves energy. Everything is connected. In one of the, I don't want to say the, 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 the deepest writing of the Rav, because for me all the writings of the Rav are very deep, but one of the, the latest uh, books that the, the, the Rav wrote before the, the Rav departed from this world, passed from this world, a book called Nano, from Nanotechnology. The Rav speaks about the idea of Nano, but in a spiritual level. However, the Rav explains that physically, the way everything is being structured in, in this universe, in this physical dimension, one thing that is known is when we speak about atoms, atoms, they're eternal. Atom is, is not something that can ever be destroyed or truly disappear. Atoms don't get old, and atoms cannot die. Atoms, they are e eternal, they're immortal. And we know when two or more atoms are holding hands, this is the term that they use, when two or more atoms are connected with each other, they create a molecule. And as we know that the molecule, they are the building blocks of everything in this physical reality, everything in this material world. However, unlike the atoms, molecule can break. They can become separated. So we know it in the physical level. However, in the spiritual level, it works the same. As the Zohar explains that the physical reality will be always a reflection of the spiritual system of this world. When our consciousness is unified, when we start creating the building blocks, the spiritual molecules, by creating more unity, if each one of us is an atom energetically, when we start create, striving to deepen the level of unity we have, first of all, within ourselves, and second, with others, we, we start to create very powerful building blocks in the spiritual level, very powerful structure. The Zohar is saying that in a place of unity, negativity cannot enter. In a place of unity, negativity cannot enter. When our body is unified, our immune system is strong, negativity cannot enter. When disease comes in, God forbid, it is because the immune system was weak. Unity within ourselves, when we work towards unifying our energy, our mind with our heart, our thoughts with our words, our past and future with our present, when we strive to create this unity within ourselves, the Kabbalists explain unity is the most powerful thing that exists in the world. Within unity, negativity cannot enter. 
when we start we have the reasons that convincing our mind how everything is separated and fragmented how everything is naturally unified I have myself and there is you I have my thoughts and I have my heart I have my feelings and I have my body and everything is so fragmented when our minds start to convince us to buy into the fragmentation of this world this is when we lose unity this is where the molecule in a spiritual level start to break and this is where st space being created allows negativity in there are many powerful spiritual tools the Kabbalists speak about in the thousands of years of wisdom to help developing the strength of unity and removing space but I want to share with you one one idea that for me personally as I was preparing for my work with the energy of this week inspired me the, the most not inspired me in a way of you know it's a mind-blowing idea no but inspired something inside of my heart and I hope it will inspire your heart as well the Kabbalists explain the work to remove space and to awaken greater level of unity is more simpler than what we think and one of the tools is simply to open up something within myself to feel the pain of others to feel the pain of others when we take a time to awaken our desire to feel the pain of others there are many magical things that can happen the Kabbalists explain that even though I might find that I don't have even the ability or the tools to help remove the pain of others it says that when one truly opens their heart to feel the pain of other people since that pain that the other individual experience which spiritually we know everything is connected to cause and effect so this pain is this type of a pain that another individual around me experiencing it might be an emotional pain it might be a physical pain it might be financially is going through a very difficult time that affects many aspects of their lives people going through pain it says that when the individual opens themselves to feel the pain of others as we know the pain that another individual experience is not a random pain is somehow connected with their soul correction with their soul process but since this pain is not connected with if I get to feel the pain with my correction because it is not internal pain that I feel therefore it is not part of my tikkun it is not part of my correction it's not part of my what my soul came to correct in this life when I open myself to feel the pain of another human being the system is so perfect that the system will not allow me to feel this pain for long term if I hold on to feel the pain of another individual since this pain does not belong doesn't fit to my correction there is one way for the universe to eliminate my pain is to eliminate the pain of the other individual our capability to help each other is beyond what we can even imagine of course we need to take many actions in life and of course we need to see what can we do for each other in the physical levels in life however it never starts in the physical way of helping each other it starts as human beings to take some time in our day to open our heart to feel the pain of each other even the effect of all actions when you already take an action to help someone the impact of your actions how much your action will have strength to help the individual not just temporary at the moment to feel better but for the long term of their life of their destiny the impact of your action depends in the level of your capability to feel their pain there is a big difference between feeling the pain of others and understanding the pain of others we are all capable to understand the pain of many people around us the pain in the world the pain that people are going through in different places in the world we are all capable to understand but the nature of this life is getting back into my life so my mind my heart is no longer holding on to this pain 
If each one of us would take just a little bit more pain from the world, just for another moment, maybe the universe would infuse this reality with extra energy that will eliminate and will remove another chunk of negativity and pain that the world is experiencing. The Kabbalah is saying, when someone is sick, one of the biggest things you can do for them is simply going to visit them. When someone visiting a sick individual, the Kabbalists say we should meditate to take one aspect out of 60 aspects without getting into the details of why 60, but there is a division in a spiritual level. So one out of 60 aspects of the pain of the other individual when we visit someone who is sick, we should meditate to take from them one out of 60 parts of their pain. The Kabbalah is saying that this one out of 60 cannot truly affect us in a negative way. But if 60 people would go and meditate, not just think about it, but meditate with their heart to take one out of 60, potentially they can take away all the pain from this individual. What is missing in this world? Sometimes we feel light. If there would be more light, you know, everything would be better. But what the Kabbalists explain, and this is the work of this week, in order to remove the space from within ourselves, and between us and other people, what is missing in the world is us opening our heart to feel the pain of each other. If we would feel each other in the same way that our blood cells filling all the organs within our body and the needs, the white, the red cells, the need of what is needed and where, and I'm here just to be there for you. If more individuals in this world would develop themselves into that spiritual space, now this space in the positive way, not a space of fragmentation, but this spiritual zone, this spiritual place, we have the capability to remove all the darkness from this world. This is why this portion is being read in Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, which is the day to remove all the negativity from the world. But in this week, it is not that energy that is coming down as it comes in Yom Kippur. It's the week that the awakening of this same power can be awakened because of the work that each one of us is going to do. So in this coming week, we want to use the energy of this week to remove space First of all, within ourselves. And we want to remove space between us and others. The tool in order to do this work, it is creating a frame of time each day to open our heart, to feel. And if we cannot feel, at least we can awaken the desire to feel. To awaken our desire to feel the pain of other people. To realize that the work that was done in Yom Kippur by the high priest of removing all the chunk of negativity from the universe, each one of us can become the high priest in this week. A vehicle, an instrument to remove, to eliminate the space, to remove and to eliminate the pain that exists in this, in this world. 